This is the photo which my friends took in 2019 in France. I'm pretty sure some, that some of you guys are already aware of what picture you're looking at. Oh, it's written there. This is La Marche pour le Climat, the March for the Climate, or as known as Friday for Fishing Movement. At this time in 2019, I was studying in France for high school. I saw a surge of people's actions and people's awareness towards climate change. In my French high school too, many of my classmates actually refused to go to classes and instead went to the demonstration on Friday afternoon. I was truly astonished by how French teenagers, as young as myself, took climate change seriously. It was also a symbolic moment for me that I realized I want to, I have to, and I will make a move for climate change. I eventually figured out that the concept called carbon credit can be the key to tackle climate change. But before talking about carbon credit, I'd like to talk why I'm interested in this environmental spheres and why I believe in carbon credit. By the way, I'm Kensho Kawasaki, a second year student at Waseda University and a leader of Carbon Credit, of Green Fuel, a project for Carbon Credit. After I came back from France, I searched a lot about how we can tackle climate change. Well, there are many ways, right? For example, reducing garbage or recycling garbage or using less electricity, or using less cars, or planting trees, or joining the demonstration by Friday for Future. That sounds great. There are thousands and thousands of ways to tackle climate change. But I also found out that there are three interesting gaps when approaching these methods, and I'd like to share it with you today. The first gap, the gap between generations. This means that older generations are blamed by younger generations because older generations did not do anything for the earth and they exploited the earth. Or maybe I should say, Generation Z blames boomer generations. And I'm pretty sure that some of you guys already know this, okay boomers. Oh, by the way, please don't be offended if there's any, any audience who's in this generation. So, okay, boomers. Now, the question is, why does this generational gap happen? Well, the answer lies in history. The environmental issues and pollutions actually evolved through time. Since the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century, Human, humans have started to use fossil fuels, such as coal and oil. And after the two greatest wars, the usage of such fossil fuels accelerated very fast, very quickly, as humans seek more and more economical development. But the environmental issues and pollutions actually stayed relatively in a circle of a city or a country, and people did not have to deal with it as long as they could live comfortably. But that all changed in 1980s. 1980s, it was a time that the global warming was identified as one of the greatest threats to the human history, to the human beings, for the first time in the human, human history. Ozone depletion was becoming an evident problem for humans as well. Global, the environmental issues and pollutions suddenly became global and complex. Environmental issues is not something that no longer one or two countries can solve, but all governments, all countries have to deal with. Then, from our generation, from the 2000s, that means Generation Z, the tackling of climate change actually became something of our lifestyle. Tackling the climate change is no longer something that only the governments deals with, 
but it's something that we as a creature living on this planet have to sustainably live with the natural world or the nature rather than using the nature of the natural world. If you understand this whole perspective and whole larger perspective of say the environmental history, we can understand why there's such a gap between younger generation and older generation. But this does not mean that all people all people should do, do not have to tackle climate change or make an action for that. We need more stronger and clear incentives for all generations to make an action. The second gap, the gap between superficial interest and actual interest. This means that there is a gap between people's superficial interest towards climate change and their actual interest and their actual actions in the daily basis. Well, think it this way. Let's say that you ask 10 people at the Shibuya Crossing, that famous Shibuya Crossing in Tokyo, say, are you interested in sustainability? I'm pretty sure that at least 7, 8, maybe 9 of them are going to answer that, yes, I am interested in sustainability, or yes, I like the idea of sustainability. But, what if we change the question to what kind of actions do you take in a daily basis to tackle climate change? I think the number of people who can answer to this question with a clear answer would drop to maybe two, three, or maybe at the best four. Then what about these six, seven, eight people who couldn't answer to this question? Well, they simply don't do anything more there for for the climate change, or they're not conscious enough to do that. And I can totally understand this. Because I myself too, sometimes I forget my reusable bags for supermarkets, and it's for a combi, and then I use plastic bags instead. So I can totally understand this. But this really shows that there has to be, there should be an incentive, strong and clear incentive for everyone to actually make an action in their, in their daily basis. And the third gap, the gap between capitalism and environmental issues. Well, first of all, we humans emit CO2 just by living. If you say that you don't emit CO2 at all, then you must be an alien or something. We can hardly deny this, but the thing is, if we pursue more and more economical developments in this capitalis capitalistic society, of course we emit a lot of CO2. But the many corporates and many governments still claim that they want to reduce their CO2 without any clear plans. On one side, they're saying, let's reduce CO2. On the other, they're saying, Oh, but we can still sell this humongous fossil fuel cars, right? Without eliminating this fundamental gap between capitalism and environmental issues, I believe it is almost impossible to achieve the carbon neutrality, which is a situation where humans' overall emission is net zero. We need more clear and more effective incentives to reduce, reduce CO2, I thought. So, after seeing all of these three gaps, we can see that the voluntary incentives is at the bottom of these three gaps. And this is where carbon credit comes in. Carbon credit is a right to emit CO2 in other words, and it is traded between countries and big, and big companies in the current situation. And it is actually can it actually, carbon credit actually can give incentives for people to reduce CO2. And how does this work? Well, think in this way. Let's say that you're the president of a car company called Tech Automobile. Well, I'm the president of a plantation project called Tech Plantation. 
And you and your company want to reduce your CO2 emissions or a carbon footprint, while I, on the other hand, want to plant more and more trees but have not much money. Then what about you pay me some money and I plant trees and then for you and then release CO2 for you, or in other words, sell carbon credits to you. This is the basic idea of carbon credit. But the thing is, in the current situation, many, um, for smaller companies and for individuals, it is actually very difficult to trade carbon credit in a very easy way. I wanted to solve that point. Previously, it was something if the individuals and the small companies want to co trade carbon credit, it could take tens of documents. It could take months to just a carbon credit. To solve this, I came up with an idea of a carbon trading platform. So, what would happen if all companies and all individuals could trade carbon credit in a platform like this? This means that billions of money that were previously used for other things will flow into carbon reducing activities such as reforestation, as I said. And this platform will be the stream of such investments because carbon credit is, in other words, an indirect investment into carbon reducing activities. So this is why I believe carbon credit is needed. But at the end of the day, it is you who is going to use this kind of platform. People's awareness towards climate change and towards sustainability matters the most. Do not leave it to the country or the company. If you really wish to save the planet from the threat of climate change, you have to act on your own. You can start from anything, using less air conditioners, using less cars, or offset your carbon emission. My dream is, when I ask 10 people at the Shibuya crossing, what kind of actions do you take in your daily basis to tackle climate change? 10 of them, all of them, are going to answer like, yes, I am interested in sustainable, yes, I do use reusable bags. Instead of, instead of plastic bags, or I offset my flight when I travel. It is not someone sitting next to you or behind you who is going to change the world, but it is you who is going to change the world. Thank you.